Okay, and yo, this is Bernard, aka the Scarlet Spider. And this is Samir, the King in Black. And we're and, back for another whirlwind adventure. Don't stop doing that. We are the Angry Blurs podcast. Where the nerds are black and the nerds are angry. All right, first things first. Let's get a couple movie trailers out the way. Transformers Rise of the Beast. What are your thoughts? Okay. My thoughts are that I deeply hate Michael Bay and his disregard for cinema integrity. Um, you know Michael Bay isn't directing this one, right? He's producing. So with that being said, his, is he producing? Yeah, he's, he's I don't believe up. he produced uh, Bumblebee. And this he is, is up, yeah, Bumblebee. he's definitely producing. He's, he's either EP or producing. Uh, he is, so here's the thing. So he had a chance to make the Transformers franchise something not dumb, and he made it dumb. And he continues to make it done. And, and it's like he has it's like it's okay to to indulge in uh you know special effects, spectacle, uh obviously sexuality cells, all that can be used effectively, all right, and, and with, with with eloquence and decorum. And he doesn't have any of that. Okay? Time and time again he's proven that he is the uh the poor man's uh um, who's a good who's a good counterpoint to Michael Bay? Um, Steven Spielberg? Nah, not really, because Steven Spielberg he has a different flair. I, I, my knee jerk is to say um, uh, James Cameron, but no, there's I other, you other there's other um, uh, directors that would employ different. Mm, I would say no. <sighs> He's a poor man. Something I'm trying to think of who would be a good counterpoint. I. <sighs> I wouldn't say something like this, no. Hey, what's your gain at? Um, why do you ask? Because you still loud as hell. Hang on. Why do you always <laughs> how's that comment on my gain? So all right, is that better? <laughs> yes, it is. Okay. All right. Anyway, the point is guy sucks. Um this, however, looks better. Um I well, like it's good, but you didn't watch that. And the oh, person you identify one. as in a tuxedo was in it. Haley Steinfeld <laughs> was the lead. Um, so listen, so yeah, uh I I guess I could watch Bumblebee. Now not that this is the prequel to the new friend um timeline. It, I don't know. Like I said, I'm I'm just I, I, that last the last one I saw was so dumb. It With was, Mark Wahlberg, the uh, last night. Yeah, that movie was extra dumb. Like it's it's a special kind of dumb. No disregard for its own continuity. Look, if your continuity's dumb, at least respect your own continuity, because no one else is going to do it. All I right? like how people are saying bring back Shia. Um, if you no, watch, if you watch Ooh, less um, people, which one was it? Um, Age of Extinction. They clearly acknowledged that Sam Witwicky is dead. Yeah. He uh yeah he had died he died in ambush right. Something like that, yeah. Because Anthony Hopkins is the last wiki wiki standing. Anthony Hopkins is related to. How did they do that again? What, what, I don't what's it? What was Anthony Hopkins? Was he was he the explorer guy that 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 lived all his years or like that? Did they explain something like that? Like what happened? Um, I don't remember. I would have to go back and rewatch. Is the it. mom and dad dead too? I guess so. That's dumb. That's super dumb. Anyway, I'm not hey, saying bring back Shia. You, hey, I'm... you don't want to bring back the lead, kill the whole family. I look. Uh, I think no humans is better, in my opinion. But with that being said, hopefully we can get a couple of things. One, a, a Bumblebee with a personality. Okay, please. Sorry. Not- nope. Because remember, this is a prequel, so he literally gets his voice box ripped out within the first 10 minutes of Bumblebee. They can't put a new one in? He's not with the Autobots um, at the end of Bumblebee, so he still might not be with them. He's he. I thought he what, did. He appear in the trailer of this one. Yeah, but he wasn't with anybody. I mean, probably towards the end with like the big fight because you see Bumblebee and Cheetor side by side. That was that was sexy. Okay, look, part of me is is hype because the Maximals is they hold a special part in my childhood. Yeah, dude, also, I, got, I still got the first season of Beast Wars, and I think that's uh, expensive. That's as rough. Time. It'll yeah, that CG too. is that rough. Not, rough. Yeah, I mean, it did not age well. <laughs> All right, so also, also, RC, um, we need more female Autobots. And Michael well, Bay RC B. was in Bumblebee. Yeah, well, I didn't see Bumblebee. I but, know. Yeah, listen. Besides that three I, seconds of uh, uh, RC uh, uh, bikes and... 
what's whatever the third one was. Um, I would have to go over to my shelf. I forget. But I don't know. They have not been Moon, kind of... Age of Extinction. I want to say Revenge of the Fallen. That's what it was. No, Revenge of the Fallen is like the dark side of the moon or dark of the moon or something. They did. Like they that. did those. They, they they had one line and they killed like two of them. You know. So it's yeah. like, it's like, dude, it's like. Just just make some good female characters. That man can't do female characters. And in this day and age, I think that's a, a fat F if you can't do good female characters. It's like, okay. You know, he had Megan Fox kind of parading around the whole time. And then... Hey, and man, then don't the, forget he had Megan Fox play a stripper in Bad Boys 2 when she was 15. What? Really? You really didn't know that? <laughs> I did not know that. I'm surprised you didn't find that out from TikTok. Yes, that, that was a thing. That makes him even... It's like has someone she, was, she was an extra, so you didn't see her. Yeah, but this, can someone please me to this man? God, get no, him out don't, of here. no, don't do that unless you actually have a reason to. I don't know. Casting a fifteen year old to play a stripper is a little sus. I think she might have just been like a bartender. I don't remember exactly. I just know she was in the well, strip bartender club. Bartender is a stripper. So yeah, I, I can't. I can't remember. I just know it was in the strip club scene of Bad Boys Two. Either Bad Boys Two or Bad Boys One. I think it was two. I can't remember. What are you looking it up? Um, he kind of. Anyways, uh, yeah. So to not harp on this subject any longer, I guess I have to watch Bumblebee now, and I'm kind of tentatively excited. Hopefully, this doesn't suck. I mean, you kind of don't because they're not connecting sequels. So like Haley Steinfeld and John Cena aren't in this one. But what's it the is- timeline now? Uh, Bumblebee was late eighties. This one is uh mid-90s. no, no. Where? Okay, it's just a new franchise. Yes or no? Yes. So doesn't Bumblebee connect to it? And does the events of Bumblebee lead into this movie? I don't know if the events of Bumblebee lead into this movie because I mean I can tell you all about Bumblebee. I mean, yeah, I mean, what's, what's I'll spoiler, watch it. Spoiler for your old movie for you. So basically, well, 40, it was, I think it came out in twenty eighteen. I said four oh, yeah. year old. Oh, yeah, four. Yeah, uh, four. But yeah, so um. From what I recall and seen in this trailer, what I recall from Bumblebee and what I've seen in this trailer, it looks like nothing's connected because it's literally Bumblebee trying to get his um, memory back in Bumblebee. And, you know, Haley Steinfeld finds him, obviously. And then, you know, um, Predacons, I mean, Decepticons literally do what's in their job and, I mean, do what's in their name and actually deceive the humans into um, forming some type of alliance to take out Bumblebee. Okay, then, so you know, he goes off on his own. All and right, get a nice um, rendition of Haley Steinfeld's "Back to Life" with the '80s version. Listen to it on YouTube. Um, I'm not playing it because we already got a uh, third party warning on Spotify, which I got to resolve. Oh, okay. <laughs> Fucking Spotify. All right. Um, you got any more to chime in on Rise of the Beast? Mm, uh, just, just, just don't suck and 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 do some goddamn work, like. Keeping a, a consistent continuity isn't that hard. Yeah. Just, just do it. Uh, people are complaining about CG. CG looks fine to me. They look I great. It. I watched it on my TV. I watched it on my phone. I watched it on my tablet. It all looked good to me. Um, I, only I honestly had... don't know what the issue is. See, I love CGI movies. I don't know what people's problem is, honestly. No, they, they're they just saying it's not polished or something like that. I'm like, that looked polished it to me. It looks fine. They've been working on this movie for a while now because I think Anthony Ramos was on The Breakfast Club in, like, in 2019 talking about it. But my only my only grievance, uh, Optimus Primal. Um, when he, I don't know if it's going to be fixed or they're just going to ignore it. If you go back and watch the trailer, he still he doesn't have the um the same color scheme as Optimus Prime. So if you remember in Beast Wars, Optimus Primal when he transformed, he had like the blue um headpiece and like blue around his lips and stuff like that. So it was a slight homage to Optimus Prime. Oh, okay. All right, so what? The beeping. Beeping. Oh, that's my wife's alarm. Hang on. All right. Five minutes later. But yeah, so guys, um, let us know in the comments if you were going to watch Transformers: Rise of the Beast. <sighs> All right. I was like, "What the hell was that?" I know that ain't the damn microwave. Okay. Anyways, um. All right. What's the next trailer? Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Okay. Mm, yeah, I'm excited about that. Uh, I 
Zoe Saldana is all over this trailer, so they definitely bring her character back in. I want to see how they're going to write her back into the plot and what and what uh, and what capacity is she going to be involved with Peter? Because they were like this and loving everything. And one of the best scenes of uh, Infinity War, actually, in my opinion, um, one of the best scenes, anyways, that them uh, Infinity War or in game Infinity War. Okay. Because, uh, like, when he actually pulled the trigger and and uh, the bubbles and came out, the, yeah, it's like, oh, Peter, it's like you spent too much of him doing it. I'm like, it was so good. So that whole trifecta there was good. And um, oh yeah, and then everyone hating Peter because you know he couldn't, he didn't keep with the plan. Okay, so l- l- let's just settle this once and for all. Uh, I'm on Peter's side. What? What the fuck? Listen, look, someone he loved got... No, no, I understand why he did it, and I'm not angry at him. It wasn't smart. I mean, the people online are, were mad at him. They still might be mad at him. You know people still blame him for Stone, for Tony Stark dying? If anything, brain got the strain. Why couldn't he just wipe the Time Stone back? Did they ever explain why the Time Stone wouldn't work right there? He brought back an apple, which made no sense. The apple ate itself and then re- uh, unate itself. In Doctor Strange, but they couldn't unburn Tony Stark. What the frick? Like no, because remember when? Um, who's gonna use the damn stones? Um. Oh yeah, I guess it's time. Yeah, strong, strong, strongest person who used it ended up with a mutilated arm. Well, Banner, they, only one, they only need one stone. He could just pull one stone off of the the glove. But um, oh yeah. Uh, but I guess I guess technically it was still on that uh, 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 Tony Stark's gauntlet, so yeah. I guess Strange couldn't just pluck it off real quick. I get I don't know. Point is, they could have used the Time Stone. There's no reason why. There's nothing that says it couldn't. Anyways, um, not the harp on a movie that came out like you know four years ago at this point, almost three, nineteen. Uh, yeah, well, it was right before in a few months. Yeah. So yeah, uh, Guardians trailer. We Love got it. our first look at um, Will Poulter as Adam Warlock. Yeah, that, he looked pretty good. Um, no notes on his costume and makeup because you know they actually put the actor in makeup. So full you know, marks. It, you know, it'd be real funny if that was all just like um, CGI. Don't care as long as it looks like the character. Yeah, don't care. All right, make the character look like the character. All if right. you don't, then you fail. All right. Uh, we also got to talk about that show at Chukwudi uh, Uju as uh, the high evolutionary who is not in, you know, full purple makeup. Yeah. Mm. What? Mm. What? Did you not recall? You know, the high evolutionary is like a big old purple dude with a. Yeah, I know. And it's like, uh, he looks a little human here. Yeah. You know, it's Um, like. Yeah. Um, we also got our first look at Layla the Otter. Uh, Lila, um, who is one of Rocket's friends, and I think once upon a time was his girlfriend. Um, we obviously got our first look at um, late teens, early 20s Groot in the holiday special, which we'll be talking about. Uh, but apparently, according to Wikipedia, Elizabeth Del Becky will be returning as Aisha. Sylvester Stallone will be. I can um, always use more Elizabeth Del Becky. Yeah, Sylvester Stallone will be uh, re- reoccurring as um, Starhawk. Ah, I can use less Sylvester Stallone. Bro, what was the last thing you saw Sylvester Stallone in Creed Two? Probably not. Not not near. Way too much. I think you know he, he, he a little over the hill. Leave Sylvester Stallone alone. He got a good show on Paramount Plus. It's called Tulsa King. It actually just got renewed for a second season. Uh, and um, one of my uh, favorite actors will be coming back as Martin X as well. Uh, Michael Rosenbaum. Yeah. Uh, okay. um, and Nico Santos is in this. I thought it was the other Nico Santos. But no, nope, uh, Nico Santos from Crazy Rich Asians. Not the German singer. But yeah, so uh, Guardians will be dropping on May 5th. I forgot what the release date was for Rise of the Beast. I think it was like around the same time. Let me double check this real quick. June 9th. There was another trailer that was out and I can't recall what it was. 
I want to say, um, I can't remember. Do you remember? Uh, another trailer. Let me check. Yeah. We did. No, we got a John Wick poster. Yeah, we've been got the trailer for John Wick uh, like a couple months ago. But hang on. But yeah, man, summer is definitely going to be lit. Cocaine bear. Oh yes, cocaine bear. Um, it's gonna be lit. It's gonna be awesome. Uh, so so. When I'm watching this trailer, you know the first thing that popped in my head? What's that? Is that Sean Sice? <laughs> you know who Sean Sice is? Refresh my memory. Okay. If you spend a lot of time on TikTok, I'm surprised you can't recall who Sean Sice is. Sean Sice is the guy who's um doing the TikToks about uh, quitting his job or, you know, customer service. At this job, we're a family. No, we're coworkers. We're in a store, not a Vin Diesel movie. What do you think this is? Fast and Furious 10, dollars an hour? Hate to disappoint you, but I've applied to 40 other families this week. We're not family. We're acquaintances who keep our lunch in the same fridge. This is just a job. Oh, yeah, that wasn't him. That was him. Go back and watch the trailer. That's him. He's even in the, um, he's on, he's listening to IMDb. He's the guy who finds the bear. Oh, God, not you too, Arsenio. What? He um he downloaded that uh the uh AI uh painting app. Okay. Oh um, size? What do you spell size? S E I S S. And um we also have to give congratulations to Kiki Palmer. Yeah, yeah, she's pregnant. Damn, you ain't have to say it like that. Yes, she is expecting her first child. She spilled um, the beans on Saturday Night Live. I saw. Um, in other news, we also need to offer condolences. Uh, Peter David. He's not dead. No, but he's uh, he has a serious health condition. You know, when so, you say condolences, it's usually... People... I guess wish him well then. Yes. Yeah, I guess, yeah, wish him well because um, he, uh, yeah, he's not doing too great right now. Yeah. He's um he's a, he's a bit of a legend. Yeah, he's got some um health issues um that his wife posted about. So yeah, for those of you who don't know who Peter David is, Peter David basically is one of the best writers of the Incredible Hulk. He also wrote X Factor. Uh, he wrote he also created Spider Man in twenty ninety nine. He wrote Aquaman in the nineties. Um, he also wrote She Hulk in the late 2000s after Dan Slott. I actually had the honor of meeting him, I want to say twice. Yeah, twice. But I think I met him at Supercon um, 2016. No, it couldn't have been 2016 because um, he did the video for that guy who's no longer here anymore. Um, which I need to take off my YouTube page. But, oh, um, okay. Yeah. Oh, wait, who are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. Hey, Matt. Um, and 20, tw no, 2018, I want to say, I met him because I got my, uh, I got all three volumes. You know, as a matter of fact, I'm going to go get the comics real quick. Just hold on one second. Oh, we don't have to. We don't have to. I know, but I want to, I want to geek out. We don't real have quick. to. Really? We don't have to. So, so you can get up to turn off an alarm, but yeah. Yeah, that was disrupting the the podcast. That yeah. did, did, disrupting the podcast. You want to show everyone a comic that no one cares about. I mean, the comic I'm, I'm is great, fine, but no one wants to see your copy of it. It's I have three separate volumes of Amazing. I mean, not Amazing Spider Man. Spider Man twenty ninety nine issue one, all signed and um um signed and slapped. And uh, Ben Riley is it Ben Riley the Scarlet Spider? The book that came back a few years ago when. Mark Bagley redesigned his costume and everyone hated it, so they put him back in the hoodie. I didn't mind his costume. Huh? I didn't mind his costume. Yeah, I didn't I didn't mind it either. I actually liked it. And because it is, it's it's very pop culture ish. But yeah, so we gotta uh wish Peter David well. I actually I mean, I shouldn't have done it because I ain't got no money. I actually put fifty dollars on his GoFundMe. 
I'll actually put the link in the bio if you guys want to, you know, support them. That's why comic comic writers need a union or something like that. Because when stuff like this happens, it's ridiculous. But yeah, um, let me go ahead and pull up my first story. So since Samir brought this up in the uh, chat, and you guys can do see. it. Don't you do it. Don't that you 90 mother- show is coming to mother- Netflix. <laughs> and I can't wait, but um, it looks cheesy and lame. And why are we talking about it? Well, because it's that 90 show. And, you know, I don't know. Because exactly. Why no, we because about that 70 show was a big part of our childhood up until. That don't mean. When yeah, was that so- 70 show in 2011? That show was on for a good minute. I think it was on for like a decade. It so they went to like towards the, the end. Well, that's the because last, Topher Grace decided to the leave. La- like, the hey, last couple of seasons I, suck. Because he was like, hey, I did a, I did a movie with um, Dennis Quaid, Hollywood. <laughs> I'm going this way. Fox, <laughs> deuces. But he did come back for like the last season. It was actually he, eight seasons and 200 episodes. He's doing then, all right. He's on a new yeah. show called... I know the show. I watched it. I, I mentioned the show like this is the third time. It's called Home Economics. I told there you he's go. the executive producer. There you go. Yeah, he's doing all right. In fact, he's the only one out of that cast. I mean, Laura Prep on prepping. She's doing okay. She was just on. Well, she's on that the the wildly popular Orange Is New Black most recently. It ended a couple years ago. And, I guess you um, forgot that. Um, Ashton and Ashton the ranch on, he had the ranch on Netflix. Yeah, uh, and he's out Andy here. Andy Masterson is uh, shall not be named except for that one time. Yeah, hey, I was gonna say how you gonna say his name and say shall not be named. I don't know what Von Von Mama doing. I think he also got me too. No, he didn't. Um, last thing I know for a fact that he did off the top of my head, he was on the From Dust Till Dawn. I believe no, that was DJ Caruso. Fuck. Um, I'm gonna look it up real quick. Oh, he was in the Canto. He was Augustine, and he was also an onward. Mm, I guess. And so. he's on NCIS. Recurring or main? Regular since season fourteen. Okay, so that's all right. I guess he is keeping busy. Yeah. Why are we still talking about the show? I said but, we should talk about it. Well, because of the simple fact that I like the show. And um, so my only issue with the show is it looks cheesy. No, right? it looks it, lame. It's for all the same creators. So a lot of people got excited when the show was announced. I, we actually talked about it before when it was announced. So the show is going to be following Eric and Donna's daughter. Uh, Leia. Yeah, well, they're, are they deadbeat parents? Or is, is, is Laura mm-hmm. and, uh, and Eric dead? No. Donna and Eric no. dead? No. So the show takes place over the summer. So each season will take place, you know, during the 90s in the summer. So they're just, Layla's just going to spend the summer with her uh, grandparents. Oh, okay. That's so actually a good way friends. to not yeah. have uh, Topher Grace and Laura prepping on the show. Yeah, so they will be doing um, cameos every now and then, but they will not be series regulars. The only series regulars on the show will be Deborah Jerrell Rupp and uh, Kurt Wood Smith. So um, Eric's parents and, you know, the guy who participated in the murder of Alex Murphy. I recently saw a uh, someone was airing the first Robocop on TV and they edited out the scene where the guy gets melted by the chemicals. That's like one of the best parts of that movie. And y'all yeah. edited it out. Because it was on TV. Yeah. What the frick? What's the point of even watching the movie? Yeah, yeah you know like, it was so good. You know that guy was actually on ER for a couple seasons, right? Who did he play? He was one of the doctors. <laughs> That's all I know. I didn't was, watch he Dr. was he Dr. Green? I don't know. I didn't watch ER. I think he might have been Dr. Green. I, not, if I'm picturing who I think I'm picturing, he might be Dr. Green. Um, Let's check real quick. All right, so ER. I mean, bro, um, you know I mean? Anthony okay. Edwards. Yep. No, that's not him. It was him? him. Yep. Oh yeah, he was shoot! Oh, that's uh, crazy. Top Gun, Revenge of the Nerds, uh, Planes, Northern Exposure, and Designated Survivor. He's also Pet Cemetery too. Yeah, no one saw Pet Cemetery too. I'm pretty sure people saw Pet Cemetery too. Okay, it wasn't him. Because Robocop isn't on his uh, filmography. That's what I'm thinking. Okay, because, like, so who is. Let's go to 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 IMDb. Let's go to Fight Tomorrow. Okay, let's see. 
1987. All right. Um, it's Paul What's McCrane. He was Romano. Robert Romero. Romano. Uh, yeah, he was Romano. But yeah. So, uh, guys, be on the lookout for that 90s show coming to Netflix on January 19th. But, yeah, I can't wait to check it out. I'm just glad they didn't, like, try to rehash the aura of that 70s show by, like, basically having to be everyone else's kids. But the only difference is, you know, for Danny Masterson hiding, popping up. So they did say everyone else will be popping up. So I wonder if I think they said Jackie and uh, Kelso got back together. And I think they only did that because... Ashley Kutcher and Mila Kunis are married in real life. Yeah. It's like, bro, she ended the show with Fez. That was weird. That's another thing, the reason why that show was terrible. When you run out of ideas, you start this thing called relationship musical chairs, and everyone just bounces around in relationships with, you, with the same friend group, which is weird. No one does that. It, and when it does, it usually implodes and the whole friend group falls apart. I mean, that just happened with Blair Underwood. You know, you know what that happened with? That happened with Gossip Girl. It's like, they break up, they don't break up, they, they break up, then they get crushes on other people, and they it's like Samara, you're, describing, it bit, too. you're describing the basic teen drama. Every teen drama does that. Buffy, Roswell, oh, Small Girl, Gossip one Tree Girl. Hill one, I was just about to say One Tree Hill. So you basically named every show that was on the WB at that, one point in, in fact, time. Dawson's Creek did it a lot. Yeah. Like I said, you're naming every show that was on the WB. But yeah, so check out that '90s show um, if you guys want. We spent enough time on the show. All right, moving on. I'm trying to. All right, what you All got? Right. So Wednesday is doing numbers. Yeah, actually, not that. I uh, almost said that Stranger Things. <laughs> um, that. God damn it! <laughs> I was typing. Uh, it knocked Stranger Things four off the um, most watched in a week. So yeah, yeah. I'm, I mean, do you want to give a review on that towards the end of the episode? Because yeah. we both finished it. All right. So, yeah. So, hopefully, you know, Netflix quits playing around with our emotions to just tell us already, hey, guys, uh, Wednesday's renewed. I mean, I think it is. They haven't announced anything yet. Are you sure? I am absolutely positive. But, yeah. So, guys, if you haven't watched Wednesday yet, watch it on Netflix. Um, eight episodes. Gino Ortega killed it. Um, everyone loves the dance scene. Yeah, the self choreographed. Yeah. She choreographed that herself. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to get into that a little bit later when we give our review on Wednesday. All right. Um, you want me to go? Oh, I thought that was my turn. Yeah, I you know. can go. I know, but um, that was barely anything. <laughs> All right. So. All right, where is it? Where is it? All right, so we got some news for the boys. We actually got a trailer for the spinoff Generation V. Um, that's coming to Prime, obviously. And Simon Pegg has confirmed that he will reach re ah, he will return for season four, playing Huey's father. And Huey's mother has also been casted. Um, uh, she will be played by Rosemary DeWitt. Who yeah. I know from one of them damn shows I watched on Showtime. I want to say, um, um, what is, uh, I want to say the United States of Terror. I'm double checking right now. Uh, she was in, yeah, the United States of Terror. But yeah, she was in the remake of Poltergeist. She was in La La Land. The Odd Life of Timothy Green. The Company Man and How I Got Lost. I'm just naming a bunch of stuff people probably never saw. She was in Cinderella Man with um, Russell Crowe. Yeah, I, I, the only movie I ever saw her in was Cinderella Man because that came out when I was working at the movie theater. Oh, in The Odd Life of Timothy Green. But yeah, I only ever saw her in um, the United States of Terror. And she was also in Mad Men in a stunt show called Standoff. 
But yeah, I can't wait to see what goes on in season four of The Boys because uh, what was um, Onlander's son's name again? I really hope he don't end up being a dick. I mean, he Ryan, might. Riley, Ryan, 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 maybe it's Ryan. Yeah, maybe Ryan. I don't know. It's been so long since season three of The Boys. I feel like we reviewed that last year, and it could have been this year. The way time is moving, it's crazy. But yeah, so guys. Get ready for that and check out the trailer for Generation uh, V. What you got, man? Okay, so um, Bio- in the celebration of Dragon Age Day 2022, Bioware has released a in-game cinematic for Dragon Age to Dread Wolf that sets the stage for the up-and-coming game. Uh, it basically just goes over... Um, it basically just goes over uh, the uh, premise of the game, the motives of the main character, and kind of elaborates on the last scene you get in Dragon Age Inquisition that threw everyone for a loop and did no, no one saw coming. Bro, that uh, Inquisition coming like 2015, I remember that game like being one of like the most sought after games when I'm working at Best Buy. Yeah, so yeah, that game was really good. Honestly, for all the hate it gets, uh, that game is probably one of the better games that Bioware has ever made. Um, honestly, I kind of want to play it again. But uh, yeah, looks amazing. Um, and if you haven't watched Dragon Age Absolution, go ahead and do that. I am not ready to do a review on it yet, but I will do it our next episode. I have a full spoiler review for Dragon Age Absolution. Uh, but yeah, check out that um, in-game cinematic. And um, it looks pretty good. It's narrated by, um, I think it's narrated by Varric's, uh voice actor. So that's good. You get to see hear Varric's voice again. Oh, okay. He's a fan favorite character, a dwarf, rogue. Okay. Um, Got to bring it up again. Quentin Tarantino. Sam Jackson decided to shoot back. And he said, um, I guess he was um, doing an interview. And someone asked him his thoughts on what Quentin Tarantino said about Marvel actors um, not being movie stars. Which is kind of dumb. But yes. Okay. So... Sam Jackson said, it's not a big controversy for me. Chadwick Boseman is Black Panther. You can't refute that. And he is a movie star. It takes an actor to be those particular characters. And at that point, he is very right. I mean, Chadwick Boseman was already in a movie star before. And almost he both, did Black 90% Panther. of the MCU was movie stars before they got their big roles in the MCU. With the exception of maybe you can argue Chris Hemsworth wasn't a household name, which he wasn't. And, and now he, he wasn't is. because all the movies that he did Right before the MCU got, and you can still argue Chris Evans also wasn't that big of a name, but Scarlett Johansson had a huge name before she was casted in Iron Man Two. We've already talked about that. Yeah, we already and, talked uh, about it, and we, and we went over the fact that Evans Paltrow is definitely was a movie star before she was in Iron Man One. Yeah, it's just like Quentin Tarantino. So was Jeff Bridges. What the frick? You gonna say Jeff Bridges wasn't a movie star? I mean, Jeff Bridges was only in one movie. I think he's mainly talking about um, protagonist, not antagonist. Okay, well, because damn near every because damn near every antagonist was somebody before they became uh, before they were on a Marvel. Yeah, Tom Hiddleston is a amazing actor. Okay, like I mean, honestly, I didn't know who the hell Tom Hiddleston was before uh, uh, Thor. Um, neither did I so much, but he had a uh, he he had acting chops way before. Yeah, you know, shut and up, uh, up. I'm not gonna shut say you gonna say Josh Brolin ain't a, a, a movie star. I mean, come on. Paul Rudd's been around for years before he... Uh, Paul like, Rudd's been around since the 90s. That man's a damn vampire. Yeah. Um, uh, Michael Douglas. What the frick? Evangeline Lilly. Michael, Michelle Pfeiffer? That's just a cast of Ant-Man. Yeah. Lawrence Fishburne? He popped in for a second. Yeah. Natalie Portman? Like, not, anyways, this is beating the dead horse with a stick. I think... Yeah. Uh, it's, it, Everyone says everyone is, is capable of saying something really dumb and inaccurate. You say stuff like that all the time. And like still, what? And I'm still your friend. Okay. So yeah, it happens. And you know, it's the funny thing that Sam Jackson shot back at Quentin Tarantino because you know, Quentin Tarantino they're, puts they're Samuel buddies, Jackson yeah. in damn near every movie he's done since Jackie Brown, I want to say. Pretty much, yeah. Which came first? Jackie Brown or Pope Fiction? Uh Pope Fiction came first. Okay, yeah. So since Pulp Fiction, I mean, that might just make him like, no, I'm not putting him in any more of my movies. I don't think so. I think they're still friends. You can criticize a friend and um... Can you? Yeah, I criticize your bitch ass all the time. 
Whatever, dude. What you got? Oh, my turn. Yeah. Huh? Um, it is your turn again. So, Nobody 2, starring Bob Odenkirk, is aiming to begin filming next year. I'm excited. That movie is Cinema Perfection. Yes, it is. Um, Obviously done by the uh, creative team behind John Wick as well. So, it will be fire. Oh, movie trailer that we didn't talk about. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Well, okay. So, I'm I'm excited. Um, it looks good, and I'm still wondering how old Harrison Ford is going to look in this movie. And whether no, you I'm just said Harrison Ford, right? Not Harrison. I said Harrison. I don't know what you heard, but I said Harrison. Okay, the man's name is Harrison. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, mm-hmm. I think he might. I, I'm, I'm just not sure how they're going to make him look able-bodied. I mean, I'm sure he's I mean, able-bodied. He's, for- he, did you watch the trailer? I did. Because it seems like you don't know what the hell is going on. He's still old in the trailer, but I'm obviously going to be... I heard that. <laughs> There's obviously going to be a lot of flashbacks, hence the reason they de-aged him. Yeah. The de-aging, boy, de-aging has come a long way since Tron Legacy. Oh, my God. Tron Legacy's de-aging was crazy. Jeff Bridges just looked like he was made out of clay. Ugh. And it wasn't I, good I, on... I will, always, I will always say that de-aging in uh, Terminator... Um, Salvation was uh, pretty cool, but it was also a dark room, and he didn't say any lines. And his face and was also, kind of static. It was, once again, Samir, how many times do I have to tell you? It wasn't Arnold. I know. They just put Arnold's face on someone else's body. Isn't that what they did with uh, Harrison Ford? No. And they should, I, I guess. Yeah, no, Harrison Ford still is Indiana Jones. It's just they de aged him. Yeah, but how they going to account for his mask, too? I don't think they changed the mask. I don't know, bro. His posture and everything. I'm saying his posture, everything's ch- You shrink when you get older, all right? Han in uh, A New Hope wasn't the same Han in The Force Awakens. He looked smaller and sunken in because he was old, okay? His posture was uh, that of an old man. I'm just saying. Are they going to change that too? I thought they used a stunt actor or something, slap Harrison Ford's face on him, and then this voice over it. That would have been making more sense. You know, because then you could do all the flippy flips, okay? Well, I think the they obviously got a stunt actor for stuff like that. To Are do you the, sure? Because they, they said, he the broke his flips. He, yeah, he broke his uh, collarbone on set. They let that old man sit down. Just let him stay home. Got him out there. I don't endorse hurting old people. Elder abuse. Stop that. Stop what? Age shaming. I'm not age shaming. You, your bone density uh, changes as you get older, and it makes you more susceptible to breakage and sprains. Yeah, I guess. All right. You know that's that, that's no you ain't guessing that. That's what happens. Your bone density changes, you shrink, and you get oh, and your cartilage withers away and gives you arthritis. All right, you shouldn't be running around. Let him sit down. Talk about it. Let that old man sit down. Oh, um, Gina Ortega. So it is. Well, she rumored. is on on a uh, a train of success right now. Go on. I mean, she's been on a train of success all this year. You didn't watch Screen Five. She was in. Oh, you didn't watch X. I know I didn't watch X. There you go. All right then. <laughs> all right. So it is rumored that she is uh, set to appear in Daredevil: Born Again as White Tiger. Ooh. Okay. First off. Can they lock her in for a, a, a contract? Because, I, again, I don't like using um, popular pre-established actors if they can't stay for a contract and get a couple of roles out of the out of the character, okay? Like, let's say, for instance, Lois Adonis is tired of franchise work. And I'm like, yo, go do your thing, take care of you. If they're gonna, But they're not going to recast Gamora, so now we don't have a Gamora anymore. Well, James Gunn already said that this is the last Guardians movie. Right. But this is why the thing is that makes... One, why is he the only one that can do Guardians movies? Get another director. Well, maybe they just want to do three movies? No, that's dumb. Why would you lose the, the, the premier space team? Because you're not going to give us S.W.O.R.D. anytime soon. Samir? Yes? We had three Iron Man movies. We had okay. three Tom Holland Spider-Man movies. We had three Chris Evans Captain America movies. The only person who has ever had four movies is Hemsworth. Yes, he, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, he did. 
Um, yeah, we're getting a fourth Captain America, but it's also a different Captain America. That's fine. And look, I'm all for mantle passing, which that's a canonical, that's a come canonical, 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 canonical is the word you're looking for. <laughs> canonical mantle passing. Great. Uh, Angela Del Toro, um, or who they, or, or the, the who, what was the later girl? I don't Angela was the first one, or the, technically Angela was the second one, and then there's one after her, the third one. Who's the third one? Yeah. Um, I don't remember her name. I'm trying to remember. I honestly cannot remember. Uh, what was her name? Uh, yeah, I want to say Yolanda. No, was, Ava. Ava, yeah. Ava what, though? Um, Ava Ayala. Okay, yeah. Ooh, ooh. Honestly, I like Ava a lot. I like Angela, but Ava definitely brought a different flavor to the role. And um, oh yeah, she's niece of the niece or daughter of the of first Hector. one of Hector. Hector. But hold on, wasn't Angela also related to the first one? How was she related um, to the first one? Uh, Angela is Hector's niece. Angela's Hector's niece. Then Ava, Ava is Hector's Ava. sister. Okay, there we go. It's in the family. So yeah. I think they should start with Angela, definitely, and reference Hector because no one cares about Hector. <laughs> Damn, bro, hey, hey, dude, the character didn't become anywhere near popular until Angela and then Ava took up the role, and they started popping back in the Marvel comics. You gotta remember, he- dude, Hector was around in the seventies. He was, I know, exactly. I'm not saying he didn't trail, trailblaze because he was a Latino character back in those times. I'm just saying no one cares. Okay. Great. Mantle pass to Angela. Okay, same thing with like Marvel. No one really cares about Marvel. Marvel has been um, relevant since the 80s. Okay? Angela, Secret Invasion. What about we Secret Invasion? Marvel, we thought Marvel was back. Turned yeah, out and then he strong. wasn't. Okay? Carol has been um, holding the mantle of Marvel. Hate her, love or hate her, which I don't know why some people hate her for some reason. Um, love or hate her, she's the de facto Captain America for much longer than Marvel was. Captain Marvel. What about what? You said Captain America. I said Marvel. Why is Lawrence with ears today? You said Captain America, dude. <laughs> the anyways, you you messed up my rhythm. So what I'm saying is, when a character spends more time, at, like who's a who, what's another example um, of a mantle that's been held longer than the original character? Uh, I wouldn't say Carol has had the mantle of Captain Marvel um, longer than Marvel because dude, Marvel has it. Ca- Carol became Captain Marvel, I want to say, maybe like eight years ago. Nah. Her first book is Captain Marvel. Let me see. Hang on. No, her first book is Miss Marvel. No, no, no. I'm going to say her first book as Captain Marvel. That's when she premiered as the That's character. That's what I'm saying. I think that was like maybe eight years ago. Nah, it was more than eight. It was like 09. I don't think it was 09. Uh, all right, Carol Danvers. 2010s. All right. When the hell did Kelly Sue the comic start writing this book? 2012. Okay. I was, so I, okay, I was off by two years. Ten years. Ten years. So she's been ten years to get it. Now Marvel. Hang on. Let's see how long he's been around. Since the 60s. Right. But when did he? When did how long was his book running? Like, right, when so did he Marvel's die? Marvel's first book was in 1967. Yeah. Okay. Um, so he definitely 80s, held it longer than Carol. Twenty, but twenty years. Okay, so twenty years. But he's been dead. Yeah. So yeah. So Since he had held for twenty. Yeah. So the death of Captain Marvel was eighty-two. So that's about yep. twenty years. Um. So yeah, Carol has had the mantle as half as long as, as he had been more relevant. All right, in recent years because he's been dead so long. So yeah, and, but. But also because Marvel, for some reason, they don't want to bring back characters. We don't like, need to bring him back. Let him stay dead. How would he make the comic? How would he make the book better? You know, we can have two, oh, go- Samir, we can have two Captain Marvels the same way we got two Captain Americas. We had two Spider Men for a while. We got yeah, four Sam, Goddamn Green Sam Lanterns. Sam and Steve represent something now. This man represents nothing, and I don't see him being relevant if you bring him back, unless he's a villain or something. I don't know, but. I'm not really feeling, I wouldn't feel his return, you know? It's like bringing Uncle Ben back. No one needs you back, bro. Just stay dead. No, well, the difference between Uncle Ben and Marvel is one has powers and one doesn't. Like, unless okay, you, Clea, like, Clea, coming, Clea coming back was, was interesting because it shook up the, the book. And, you know, she has, she holds, 
I can see her ain't go much better than Captain Marvel. I, we already got we got Novar. If we want to tap into the Kree lineage, we got Phyla Val, uh, his yeah, sister. Yeah, uh, Phyla is dead. The Phyla that's around is from a different dimension. Um, yeah. Novar is also from a different dimension. It's the whole Hulk and uh, what's uh, what's the, what's the chick's name again? Um, what? His his daughter from another dimension. Lyra, Lyra. Yeah, Lyra. Is 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 that? So it is the same, but at the same time, it's not. Look, I don't think we need Captain Marvel to ever the uh, Marvel <laughs> to ever come back. That's why I'm like Rachel Summers needs to go home. This is not your dimension. So. Rachel has earned her right to stay here. Her dimension sucks. She don't want to go. Leave her alone. Rachel has earned the right. She has been here time and time again. She has uh she she's fought defended Earth. No, let her stay. Okay, Rachel deserves I'm talking, it. No, I'm, I'm talking about when she first came. Dude, this well, I don't care anymore. You know, uh, no, nah, nah, Nate, Nate Gray, Nate Gray shouldn't stick around because that just muddles everything. We got no cables. Nate Gray, um, no thing. cables dead, and Young Cable went yeah, back to the center. Yeah, you know, Cable, Cable killed was, himself. Remember? Yeah, I know. Which honestly, that was kind of a long time coming. I think the the that time made sense like, to me. Look. I think we need to weed out all the summer's kids and like kind of put them to the side. It's like they got too many grown kids from the future or other dimensions. You know, it's like you got a, w- a woman your same age calling you mom, Gene. Okay, like, hold on. Okay, so I'm calling time out right there. You just told me leave Rachel alone. Now you see, we need to weed out the summer's kids. Make look, she can mind. stay. She can stay. And all the other ones can go. <laughs> so, so she can stay, but the men have to leave. <laughs> what you talking about? I don't know what you mean. <laughs> That's basically what you just said. No, that's not what I said. You need to touch some more words. All right? That's what you just said without saying it. Anyways, go like, away. It's like, oh, that's why I come on. You, you we, go back to your dimension. We don't need we, you here. We, we, uh, we all subject. We don't uh, want you right here no more. Well, we all said it. Jen Ortega asked White Tiger. Yes. I think this is a good time for her, um, for her career. She's big. But not too big, and I think she's hungry enough to stay in a franchise for a, a extended period of time. Yeah, but Daredevil: Born Again is only eighteen episodes. Will she appear in an MCU movie? I Possibly. Think she will. Yes. I mean, I mean, it took us what twenty something movies to get Charlie Cox to show up, and um, that's because no Netflix, that's because Netflix had the the right to those shows, and they developed it, blah, blah blah. Anyways. I'll say no, 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 Samir. It was developed by Marvel Television. Yes, but they didn't have their own platform when that came out. Now that they have their own I platform, get that, they're not going to put any other shows on on other um, platforms I, for the most part. I get, I get that, but what I'm saying is he could have still appeared in a Marvel movie. That's like, I don't know if you saw it, but like somebody did a fan edit of uh, the final battle for Endgame. It looks like, so janky. Yeah, I know, because they just use cuts from the other TV shows, but they added the portal in. So that's what everybody expected when Wong said, you wanted more? Because, I mean, shoot, who wouldn't want Matt Murdock, Jessica Jones, and um, Luke Cage to come up? Iron Fist, you can stay away, because Finn Jones, no. I think, okay, here's the thing. I, I, think, I, I think the character deserves better. Finn Jones. Yes, the character does deserve better. But yes. Finn Jones, that's why I said Finn Jones. I didn't say Danny Rand. Recast, recast. Danny deserves better. If, if, if anybody deserves to be recast as Iron Fist, because bro, you 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 sign up to do a martial arts show, but you don't show, the show choreography. I'm like, yo, bro, and it's like it looks so bad. I'm like, oh my god. And then the, the writer went good. It's just no. It, it wasn't the writer. Been. It was the showrunner. So I, yeah, um, showrunner. Iron Fist could have been I, so I, good. I, I actually, I actually have a rhyme as far as that showrunner goes. His name is Scott Buck. What's his status? Scott in Buck the sucks. What's the status in the comic? Damn, I, I haven't even, I haven't even started trying, reading. Trying it. To, I know. Obviously, I haven't put. Go on. What? Go I on. Haven't started the book. Go on. <laughs> I haven't started the book. Okay. All right. So, Why are you gonna ask me a question and start talking over me? <laughs> What's the status of Iron Fist? Because you know, so and so and then and then and then X Y Z. I'm trying to talk. Yeah, I know you trying to talk, but listen, that's you. Look, look, I'm gonna let you finish. I'm gonna let you finish. <laughs> you ain't even let me start. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what was I gonna say? Yeah, so let me know how that book is gonna go with the with the new Asian lead. Um, then yeah, honestly, at this point, um, they might as well give us. It's, an it's a mini, so it's a mini. It's done. So yeah, they just basically trying to whitewash them. I mean, not whitewash, but 
watch out Danny Rand as Iron Fist from what I, I saw. Because he's lost the Iron Fist multiple times and got it back. So I don't know what the whole deal is with uh, that it's it's not like, bro. Not a character. Bro, that character was already around who is now Iron Fist. He had his own book in can there and, be um, more, more than one mantle, uh, more than one person with the mantle of Iron Fist? Can he? There's different. There's different Iron Fists. I don't know if you remember that from the Ed Brubaker run, but the remember the Seven Cities? They all had their version of an Iron Fist. Remember Fat Cobra? Um, I can't remember the other ones. You me- you don't remember Fat Cobra? Vaguely, I don't know if I was reading that art. I you think I'm reading because that's it. when I, that's when Ed Brubaker was writing it. Um, and David Aja was drawing it. You're like, man, the art's cool on this. Where does this guy been this whole time? Then he started drawing Daredevil, and I think that's when you kind of checked out because you didn't care about Daredevil. And Orson Randall showed up. He was the Iron Fist who used the guns, and he taught Danny how to like use the cheetah heel and everything like that, and then Davos killed him. Mm, okay. Drawing a blank, huh? No, now I'm looking at something else. Um, oh. what was I gonna? Okay, yeah. So, anyways, I'm excited. If, Basically, if the moral of the story is we're excited that General Ortega is gonna uh, yes. possibly, possibly, we have to say that because it's not confirmed. Possibly be in Daredevil: Born Again, which is going to be the longest running MCU show because it's 18 episodes. Samir is already tired of Andor, and that's 12. So let's see how he feels with this one. <laughs> Andor's pacing is different. The show's good. It, Andor's yeah. pacing is just, I'm like, I'm out. Yeah. Also, um, what else? What? There's another bit of Marvel news. I'm trying to think that popped out. Um, anyways, this your, your turn. If it was your turn, your turn. That was my turn. I brought up General Ortega. Oh, okay. So it's uh, my turn. All right. Oh, um, well, here's a small one. Uh, it's a rumor that Marvel is trying to recruit as many quote unquote legacy actors they can for Secret War. So they're trying to get Hugh Jackman to come back as Wolverine, Tobey Maguire, obviously as Spider Man. I don't know what Professor X they're going with if they're going to go with McAvoy or Stewart or okay, McCullough or the thing. Here's the thing. I think they need to break with convention with a lot of these characters. If this is their moment to bring in the X Men. Uh, they need to bring in fresh faces to play. No, they can roles. bring in fresh faces, Samir, but this is Secret, Secret Wars, so you can have all these different iterations of yes, these characters. But the goal but the, is to merge like, the universes and change I get continuity. That. Yeah, you change continuity when you re um when you rebuild the universe. So for those of you who did not read Secret Wars, um, not the 80s version, but the more recent 2014, 2015 series written by yeah. Jonathan Hickman. So this is what Marvel is leading up to as far as the MCU goes. If you rewatch Doctor Strange, there's multiple mentions of incursions. And incursions are when worlds collide against each other. So in Secret Wars, the last two Earths that were standing were 616 and 1610. So that's your regular Marvel Universe and the Ultimate Universe. So those universes collided into each other. They were ended up in the no void. It was not the no void. That's Ben 10, my fault. They ended up in like this, this void, basically, that Dr. Doom created with using the powers of the Beyonder in Molecule Man. So it was basically like an all you can, not an all you can buffet, all out battle arena. So he set up these little stages. Um, it was like Battle World. There was like one that took place in the 90s. Uh, Old Man Logan had his own spot. And they basically came together uh, towards the end of the book. They stopped Doom, Reed Richards, and T'Challa, Peter, Miles, Doctor Strange. They basically reset everything. So a few characters from like different dimensions ended up in the Marvel, in the main Marvel universe. But they also reset everything. So a lot of these Earths still have their version of Spider-Man or whatever, like the Ultimate Universe. Um, it's just not Miles Morales over there anymore. So Miles Morales became a big figure in the main Marvel universe. But which is what their goal it, was, pretty much. Yeah. So that's what they're going to do. Um, I, I, so, honestly, it's not. It's not. It's not a far stretch to say that that entire limited series was the pull of the cash cow that is Miles Morales into the main Marvel continuity. Well, it wasn't just him. It was Ultimate Reed Richards. It was Old Man Logan. Yeah, but um, the, what's this thing called? The the um. Crap! Why can't the ultimate riches? He has a, a, a villain name. The Maker. Yeah, the Maker. Maker ain't relevant. He, he pops in, says something. Pop. He doesn't do anything nah, anymore. Nah, no. Well, he, how he's is he around for the villain? 
You can't consistently use a villain. He has to go in, make some F stuff up, and then get defeated and then leave. Villains uh, are cash cows. He was, in, are. he was in one of the most recent Avengers books. He was yeah. like the main villain of that. Yeah. He was, he, was, he, he was in the last volume of Venom. He's back yeah, in but what's the selling, universe what's now. What's selling books, though? Miles is selling books. The maker isn't selling books. I get that. He's because he doesn't have a book. Exactly. He's just showing up in books, but he's back he's, in I'm the not he's not good. Now. I'm not saying he's not an example of good writing. I'm just saying that Miles is the cash cow that they bought over, and that, that's more or less the point. Uh, the, everything else is just fixings. I mean, Singularity came over as well, but she and back she in got limbo. a cool little book, and um, she's back where? She's back in limbo. She's back in comic book limbo because yeah, she, she, yeah, exactly. she was created for Secret Wars, and they had the A Force book, and now it's like. Single yeah. who? I'm getting, I'm getting, it's giving Harbinger from uh, Crisis on Infinite, Infinite Earths. But, but, uh, well, Harbinger sat in limbo for like 30 something years after And Crisis then got Earth. killed in Batman v Superman Volume 2. Yeah, 30 <laughs> oh, years yeah, later. Was, yeah, but, and, um, like, she said on Simmons Scared this whole time. Everything was happening. Yeah. The whole time, yeah, it's like, what the hell? But, um, Old Man Logan was around for about a good four or five years after Secret Wars. Oh yeah, she because remember they killed because remember they killed Wolverine, they killed six one six Wolverine. Yeah, he, I did not care for Old Man Logan being. I'm like, okay, he's here, fine, temporarily. Because he ain't like Gabby. No, uh, he just was Old Man Logan. I never liked yeah. the idea of Old Man Logan. Great book, you like? But, yeah, great book, but I didn't care for the character. I didn't need to see him all day in day out. I was like, okay, go shoot, shoot. Well, it ended with him dying. Yes, he, he made it. He made it back to his universe. Uh, he killed like the last few standing uh, Banner kids because there were a few left, and um, he died. And Danielle has um, the little Hulk baby that he got at the end of it, and now they're like kind of trying to reform the Avengers. So Danielle Cage, I think, mm-hmm. would be the only time we ever see Luke Cage's daughter grow because that girl like eight now, and she's been around since like two thousand six. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, it's very hard for Marvel to age up characters. I think we talked about this a while ago. Dark Hawk, a character from the 90s, has two younger brothers, maybe like six and eight or eight and ten. It blew my mind. So it's like same he, popped age. Back, he popped back up in the 2010s. Same age. Them little boys ain't grow no more. Where's Dark Hawk now? Bro. Is he living mode again? Um, he lost his mind or something like that because, like, the crystal. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Remember Someone with the Fraternity was, of Raptors? Somebody, somebody was using him. Yeah, I can't remember who it was, but it happened like in Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. All right. Um, no. So, next story, uh, are we on next story? You got a, You got another story because I ain't got no more stories. I was gonna say let's oh. get our reviews. So we okay. Talk, yeah. Well, like, Daphne Keen, she has she chimed in on the accolade. This is um. So it, obviously we didn't have we don't have much of the uh, um premise of this show just yet, but apparently yeah. this is the first Sith led. Uh, Star Wars property, and I'm like, yo, this is gonna be big. This show is amping up. The cast immaculate. Okay, the premise looks dope. Uh, the, as long as they got to stick the landing, this show could be gold. It's gold. I'm excited. Yeah. So, um, from what I can see from the premise, so the acolyte is set at the end of the High Republic era in a world with shadowy secrets and emerging dark powers. Uh, approximately 100 years before episode one, a former Padawan reunites with her Jedi master to investigate a series of crimes, but the forces they confront are more sinister than they ever anticipated. So dope. Cannot wait. I'm so, I mean, I love, I love Dave Filoni and the clone, the clone wars, but this, this is not a rebellion. This is not, um, uh, post return of Jedi, uh, and this is not the um, the uh, the republic the republic era. This is high republic, which is freaking a hundred years back. Excited! So we're gonna get we're gonna get mad Sith versus Jedi uh, uh, clashes. It spans, it spans about fifty to three hundred fifty years before the Skywalker saga. Yes, no more Skywalkers. All right, look, it, I, I'm just tired of them. Okay, the other characters in Star Wars, like I cannot uh, look. I, th- there are things about the rise of Skywalker that I like. I do not like the title one, and I do not like that last line. I don't think she needed to call herself uh, uh, Skywalker. Skywalker. Yeah, hell. I okay, so, her. so yeah, I get why she did it, but I also get why you said that she should have went with Palpatine, take the name back, and try to make some good of it. But, bruh, that name wreaked havoc throughout the galaxy for what over fifty years. I mean, 
he was. I don't think everyone. Here's the thing. I don't think everyone connected uh, the emperor to Palpatine as Darth Sidious. Somehow, I think Palpatine everyone kind of put it together after, after. I think they kind of put it together after Episode sixty six. Probably. Anyways. Uh, Anyways, long story short, they they really should have just made her. I mean, she didn't have to be Obi Wan's daughter, but she could have been. It would have been better to say Kenobi. To be honest, I would have I would have preferred that more. Her her taking that name when it wasn't hers. Not to say she's not entitled to it. It's just it's giving kind of it's just rehashing the one thing. I don't know. It's giving it's giving it's giving identity theft to me because <laughs> bro, she only. I mean, she knew Leia and Luke for like a couple months, and it's just like, oh yeah. Um, my my mm-hmm. grandfather was you know this evil dude, but you know you guys were more like grandparents and parents. Also, than me, Palpatine so. fucks. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> I hate you. I hate like, you. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> like yo, who did whose cheeks did he clap? <laughs> I'm like, at what point in this man's life was he getting bitches? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe when he was younger. <laughs> oh shit! I'm like, I just don't see it. I don't see it. And that, but the, the, the age doesn't make sense because I mean, it's like it, he was already kind of old in um in the Phantom, one. the Phantom Menace. You're right. So it's like his kids had to be almost adults at that point if they were bumping around. So if they popped out a kid, that Ray would be significantly older. You know, so what t- what is going on with this timeline? I mean, we don't know Ray's I age. Think, I think we don't Palpatine, know a single guy. I think Palpatine um, clapped some cheeks well into his reign as the emperor, then popped out some kids. And because you saying Palpatine was a sugar daddy? I'm saying not even that. I'm just saying I think he walked out there and clapped some cheeks. Is what I'm saying. I am deceased. Next, next, <laughs> next story. Uh, right. The Witcher, Let- the Witcher remake will come out after The Witcher Four says uh, joint CEO of Project CD Red, uh, Adam Kaczynski. Here's the only one of us who is looking forward to that. I played The Witcher Three I, about me and like me and like a billion other people. I'm talking about on this podcast, Samir. Yeah, well, I mean, one half of this podcast doesn't matter because they don't like The Witcher, so. One half of this podcast has all the passwords and will lock you out of everything. All right. I mean, you can do the podcast by yourself, but without the charisma and the looks, where are you going to go? Yeah, I rest my case. Uh, yeah, anyways, the, again, to reiterate what I said earlier a couple of episodes back, this is a gra- from the ground up remake. They're going to, um, I'm excited about what this is going to look like, this remake of the first Witcher game. Also, uh, next uh, in several days, we're getting the um, next-gen uh, remaster of The Witcher to Wild Hunt. So that's cool. Try to play it again. Now, actually, now that you think about it, because it's going to have ray tracing. It's going to have a texture upgrade, lighting changes. Um, they're going to add in uh, some elements from The Witcher show, which I don't really care for. Um, I, I prefer the in-game armor, honestly. I don't need the nutsack armor. You know, the, the Nif Guardian armor from the show? Oh, you didn't watch the show, but it no, has like this weird no. ribbing thing on there. It looks like nut sacks. You gotta look it up. Um, but yeah, I'm excited. I'm actually going to dive back into the game. You gonna buy it for me? Time I give it a shot, bitch. What look like? Mm-hmm. Got other things to pay for. Exactly. I, I ain't paying for something that you know just so I can buy it and be like, bitch. Nah, you son. bought you bought Gotham Knights. That's not the biggest also, dice roll. I also bought Gotham Knights on a Black Friday deal. Yeah, I still so think, basically I'm sorry. half off. Oh. I'm still waiting for my Cowabunga collection yes, to get yes, here. So you know, it's a free, it's a free upgrade. So technically, The Witcher of the Wild Hunt is a very cheap and expensive game right now. And uh, oh, it's just a patch, basically. Yeah, so it's a free patch. So they they, they hand that out. Yeah, so they're basically trying to work back their goodwill over um, the fiasco over, of Cyberpunk. Yeah, which actually Cyberpunk is doing well now too. So they it's doing well, well now. It took them they, like they, what six months to fix that game. A year, actually, or, or more, <laughs> probably a year and a half. Um, but it took a it took a wildly popular anime and a lot of hard work, and I think they more or less won back a lot of people's hearts. Some people are still mad about it. What I'm mad about is I don't hear no one get, uh, getting upset about Pokemon uh, Scarlet and Violet. That's just, that game was broken when it came out, and no one said nothing. But when they said something, about, I, don't hear, I don't hear no one come for um, for the game freak. 
Say, oh, y'all suck. Because it's Pokemon. I don't know. They might be complaining about it on Twitter. Let's go. And All right, hang on. Pokemon real quick. Oh, yeah. Okay, fine. I have two more stories we we'll knock out before we go to the thing. You got two more stories, bro? Only yeah, I'm, I'm putting in work. That's why, sir. All right, tighten up. Okay. Uh, yeah, so Sifu, the popular martial arts game released earlier this year, is getting adapted into a live action uh, live action um, feature film with John Wick creator Derek Kolstad. Uh, what are you script. talking about? Sifu. You don't recall Oh, yeah, Sifu? I did put that in there. Yeah, I... Yeah, I forgot about that one. Um, I didn't play the game. It looked yeah, well, good. Well, I I didn't play the game because it wasn't my cup of tea. Um, it looked really cool, and I do like what they tried to do or succeeded in doing because the game was wildly popular. So yeah, I'm excited for the feature film though. I can't wait to see how they're yeah. gonna incorporate um adapt that. Yeah, and I've been seeing a lot of mods where people have been putting like Bruce Wayne. Uh, I think Bruce Wayne. It might have been Batman. I can't remember, but yeah, there've been a lot of uh seafood mods. But um, what's your other story? Uh, and the big, uh, the the much bigger news is a uh, uh, a big Diablo Four announcement planned for the Game Awards. I can't wait. More Diablo Four news. Oh my god, that game got me hype, 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 hype. Bro, I thought when the fuck is this game coming out, man? Next year, at least tentatively, if it doesn't get delayed. Mm. We will see. All right, so speaking of things coming out next year, this is my last story, then we are going to go into our reviews. So a movie that was supposed to be going straight to HBO Max is now coming to theaters, and do you know what that movie is, Samir? No. Blue Beetle! Oh, yeah, it's going straight to theaters, right? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah, so I'm very excited. Hopefully we get a trailer very soon. The release date is... uh, What date is it? I believe it's August 18th. So... Shout out to our, our boy, although we don't really know him, Jolo, a.k.a. Miguel from Cobra Kai. He is obviously playing Jaime Reyes, as we spoke about before. Uh, let's check who else is in this cast. I believe George Lopez is actually in this movie. Oh, okay. Cool. All right. So, yeah, the movie is in post-production now. So, yeah, it's uh, Zolo uh, Mariduena. Um, Bruna... Um, Marquezine, she's playing Penny, Jaime's love interest. Belicio Escobedo, um, who's playing uh, Jaime's sister. Oh, yeah, George Lopez is playing um, Jaime's uncle, Rudy. Uh, Adrini uh, Barraza uh, is playing his grandma, I guess. Um, Raul Tahuya is playing Carapex, the indestructible man. Um, it just sucks that... Um, his friends aren't in the movie. What do you mean? Is it his love interest? Um, you just said it was his love interest, right? Yeah, but that oh, wasn't Penny. That was Brenda, right? What's his love interest? Yeah, it was, it was Brenda. Yeah, because in the new Fifty Two, they made Brenda um a villain, which right, I thought was her stupid. mom. Her mom was a mobster, or her aunt was a mobster. Yeah, exactly. So they made her mobster then, huh? A villain. Yeah. I mean, but, is she eventually going to be his friend? Is uh, that how they write it? I don't know. She might be, you know, he might be in the friend zone. We're talking about Brenda or Penny? Brenda, like in the new 52, is that how they're writing it? Like she's going to be. Oh, no, 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 man. That book got canceled. (laughs) Oh, right. I forgot about that. That sucks. Yeah. I mean, he's got the graduation day. I believe it's a mini series. It's supposed to be starting very soon. I think it starts next month. Um, Let me double check this real quick. Oh, of course, you know, I would have to go to DC's website and I ain't got time for all that. But yeah, so um, I can't wait to see it. Uh, I've been a fan of Jaime Reyes since Jump Street. I do believe he first appeared in Infinite Crisis. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Uh, yeah, so I actually have his first appearance. I think I have, yeah, like four copies of Infinite Crisis because I got the Jim Lee variants and the George Perez variants. I actually got those signed by him. I might get those framed and just like, you know, because, you know, he's no longer with us, unfortunately. Yeah. But yeah, so I can't wait to see that. I Okay, so when it comes to Blue Beetle, we, we it don't matter what iteration it is, unless it's Dan Garrett, we definitely need, we need a Booster Gold, uh, not Booster Gold, Booster Gold cameo in this movie. Uh, I agree. 
Yeah, so we, we definitely need to see Booster, Booster Gold. And I can't think of anyone right now who could play Booster Gold. I would have said Chris Pine, but he was already Steve Trevor. Unless for some reason Dan, Daniel Radcliffe bulked up and, you know, cut his hair, but highly unlikely. No, I mean, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. I don't want it to be like, um, who was that who we saw? We didn't see him like. He got big as hell. Not Jonathan Majors. Dave Chappelle. Oh, yeah. Like when Dave Chappelle came back from Africa and, you know, and they just saw him down the street. Dave Chappelle looked like he was going to just be walking around putting people in headlocks. But, yeah, I mean, hopefully we get a cameo of Booster Go to something. The greatest hero you've never heard of. That's his, that's his tagline. Yeah. So, um, oh, next week, guys, I'm going to be doing a review of Violent Night. Um, I'm not really big on Christmas movies, but I like David Harbour, and this one actually looks pretty good. And it's getting great reviews. So yeah, yeah it's we'll actually be, number two at the box office. We'll be um, checking that out. Oh, okay, and, uh, you're gonna watch yeah, it. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't watch it. It's a good movie. Crimma. That's why Crimma. What? What are you? Why are you? Are you having a stroke? No, I say Crimma. Nah, man, you can't say Christmas no more. You gotta say Crimma. Why? You gotta take out the S's. Crimma. Why? Because it's good. It's it's funny. Crimma. I don't understand. Samir, just say it one time. Crimma. No. Do it. No. I don't Criminal. know what that means. Anyways, it's sitting at some pretty solid reviews right now. Yeah. Um, so I'm inclined to watch it. The audience loves it. The critic response has been pretty uh, welcoming. So I'm down to watch it, and I can't wait to see it. And yeah, the cast is on point. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, what can, we re- uh, what can we review besides Wednesday? Oh, the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special. So what do you want to do first, Wednesday or Guardians? If you haven't watched either people, turn off the podcast now and come back and um, watch all eight episodes of Wednesday or the 45-minute Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special. I say let's do Wednesday first. I say let's do the uh, uh, special because it's shorter and then we can lead into Wednesday and finish the podcast off with that. Okay. Um... So Kevin Bacon is officially a character in the MCU. Uh, I enjoy that James Gunn knocked it um, knocked it on the head again. Um, a lot of criticism about Groot's design. I had no problem with it. He just looks like he's juicy. He, he needs to ease up on the sap. Um, and people are like, please let this be the last time we see Groot like this. Wrong, bitch, because three days later, you saw the Guardians <laughs> trailer. Yeah, basically. And he's yeah. looking the same. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I liked it. Yeah, Mantis, um, who, uh, I, I, I cannot pronounce this lady's name. Um, Palm, Palm Clemente. There we go, Palm Clemente. She did an amazing job. Uh, and and it's, it's like we're finally getting the character... Um, Flushing out the character more and seeing more, giving her more screen time after all these years. I mean, she had a lot of screen time in Guardians too. She just wasn't fleshed out, right? And then she didn't have that much screen time in uh, Thor: Love and Thunder. Obviously, I mean, nobody had a lot of screen time. And in she Thor, had Love and she she was one of the funnier parts of Infinity War. I mean, War. she yeah, she had a lot of screen time in Infinity War. Um, in game, not so much. They just showed up at the end, so. And with yeah. that Tony Stark's funeral. Um, once again, Batista being Batista and Batista is just killing it. Um, he is one of the few actors who has obviously uh, transitioned out of wrestling and has perfected acting. Um, not throwing shade at anyone, but you know, <laughs> you, you you can you can go look outside on the ground, you might find one. Hang on, John Cena is no John the Rock. No, no, John Cena's doing that's why I said one of the few. I was looking to throwing shade else. at The Rock, but thank you for being so blunt with I'm it. I'm trying to think of who else to uh Hulk Hogan. No. Well, no, because Hulk Hogan was still wrestling. Um and he also ain't came at that well, so yeah. Stone Cold Steve Austin, he did well in the few movies that he did. He's doing a few movies that go straight to DVD. Um, because he, he really wants to be more like on the You know um, who was in a movie recently? Chris Jericho. Side. Nigga, what? Yeah, Chris Jericho was at the end credits of Terrifier 2. What the hell is it? Oh, Terrifier. Yeah. Um, I was like, wasn't Chris Jericho supposed to be in this? And then it, it, in, in credit scene popped up and here he was. He gained a lot of face fat. Uh, the man is like 52. He he He's obviously gained some weight. And like people have been criti- uh, criticizing him of that because of, um, cause, you know, he's still wrestling at AEW. 
and he just basically like suck my dick. I'm in the I'm really like one of the few wrestlers at this age who was in the best shape um that they could be. He was also in Jay and Silent Bob reboot. He played the KKK Grand Wizard. That is hmm. His mother was recently implicated in the January 6th uh riots. Why would you even tell us that? Why, that did not need what to be known. What's wrong with you? <laughs> yeah, I'm, just, I'm like, I didn't know about the KKK thing. And then you find that uh, his family, at least some members of it, are mega Trumpers. And I'm like, hmm. Well, Chris Jericho is a conservative. He lives in Florida. If I were him, well, we live in Florida. But if I was him, um, you know, I would stay away from roles like that to make it not look so you know, damning and suspect. Well, the Jay and Silent Bob reboot came out in 2019 and it's like comedy. So he obviously didn't take it serious. I'm just saying, you keep playing Don't, roles like that. Man, leave one role four, three years ago. Leave him alone. Mm. Look. But yeah, look. Was like, nah, fuck, I was, what were we talking about? The, we were talking about oh, yeah, Guardians. 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 But um, so yeah, uh, Kevin Bacon is officially MCU canon. So here's the question that came across my mind. So due to the fact that Peter Quill hasn't seen a Kevin Bacon movie since the '90s, you know where I'm going with this? Yeah. Do you? How will he recognize him? No, it's X Men First Class MCU canon. Oh, sure, yeah, sure. It could be, sure. <laughs> Yeah, I was thinking about that. That's, not, that's not the first time that they have an actor play two different roles. What you talking about, Willis? In the MCU, that's not time. That's not the first time they had an actor play two different roles. I'm so confused. What are you talking about? It's like okay, so you're you're worrying that is X Men First Class okay? Because Kevin Bacon was in X Men First Class. Yes, the, the X Men First Class in the MCU as a movie, as opposed to yes, as opposed to mutants. Because that's the only thing I can ever think of as an, an actor who was in some type of Marvel movie being mentioned in the MCU. That's why I asked that. Oh, okay. I thought you asked somebody if they cast him as Sebastian No, no, Shaw. no. No, obviously we've had people who played mutants or were a part of, you know, other Fox franchises, Chris Evans. Um, you know, but no, I'm like Chris Evans isn't an actor in the MCU. That's the point I was trying to make. Right. So like it's his whole filmography in there. Um I liked it. Um the Guardians obviously bought nowhere, so I'm glad like this is like Guardians two and a half, so How we get a little bit buy more. Nowhere? Okay, so here's my theory. They pretty much bought it at after Endgame, where it was still wrecked the shit from Thanos. And the collector just said, you know, just let me get my shit and go. So they probably think, gave him a little the they probably gave him a lot of Didn't they what? fight the collector? Like, I'm trying to remember, did something happen to the collector? Like, didn't they topple no. him or something? No, they they blew up his house in the first one when uh well they didn't, but his assistant did when she opened the um what's the purple um stone? The power stone. Yeah. Yeah. So that's all that really happened to him. Besides Thanos wrecking shit in uh, um, Infinity War, yeah, right. Guardians Guardians didn't do shit to him. But um, so yeah, we uh we open up with a musical number, which I believe is Kevin Bacon's band, um, doing the Christmas song. I know he yeah he's an actual uh, uh musician in a yeah, band. So that was him. Actually, yeah, that was him actually playing at the end of the um special. Yeah, I mean um. I'm double checking right now to see if that was his band. Also, um, what's Buddy's name in the Guardians? Um, it was actually the old 97s. They are an American rock band formed in Dallas, Texas in 1992. And they have 12 studio albums, two EPs. But yeah. Who are you talking about? Craglin? Oh, Craglin. Cra- yeah. I'm, little, I'm, I'm like, Craglin's getting so much uh, screen time. Sir. Um, I don't know what it's called, but it's basically nepotism. Because you know that's James Gunn's brother, right? It's like his... I'm, all I'm saying is, if you wanted to make him a character, couldn't I have given him such a, a much better... What? I'm just I'm just saying that, is his character original to the movies? Yes. Uh, yeah. was. Why can't we get a... Why can't he be a character that's connected to the comics? 
and then push that narrative further, as opposed to Kraglin taking over Yandu's spot. Like, like they could have made him Yandu in the first place. Well, we would have got Michael Rooker, who was well, great, James, did a great job. James Gunn always worked with Rooker, so <laughs> every single thing that James Gunn has done, Rooker has been in. Dude, Pretty did much. you forget he was in the five first five minutes of the Suicide Squad? He yes. was Savant. <laughs> um. Which, I mean, they kind of did that character dirty, but yeah. I mean, what do you expect? <laughs> but, uh, so yeah. Um, I like how they did the old style. Um, I can't remember what it's called. It's, um, the, the, the animated second it, Well, segment. Well, it's not actually animated, it's actually drawn over like the actual acting. So Michael oh, Rooker yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can't remember what movie it was that did it. Um, I can't, I can't find it. But I was listening to an interview with James Gunn, and he talked about doing that. So it was like it's good to you know bring Rooker back and you know pay him an hourly wage. But um, so yeah, we got a little backstory on you know Peter Quill trying to introduce Christmas to Yandu and Craglin. And Yandu, I mean, Kraglin tells the story to uh, Mantis and Drax um, because Quill is still sad about, you know, losing Gamora and everything. So they decide to get him a Christmas present and that of Kevin Bacon. So they go down to Earth. They go to the uh, TLC Chinese TCL, TCL uh, Chinese Theater. They actually get some money. Uh, Drax is mistaken for Kratos. Um, <laughs> Mantis basically assaults someone dressed as Captain America. And then after that, they go to a bar. That was sweet. She was genuinely happy to see Steve. I know. She was like, Steve! <laughs> but um, after that, they go out for drinks. So I get that alcohol can affect Mantis, but Drax... I'm a little confused. Yeah, he that really shouldn't affect him. I mean, technically, Drax is still human, not humanoid. But I mean, since they kind of changed his whole backstory in in the in the movies, it's kind of confusing. But yeah, so uh, after that, they spend all their money and they're trying to. Fu- oh, Cosmo! What do you think of Cosmo's voice change? As eh, opposed it's fine. to. Uh, not fine with me, but I'll let it slide. I mean, okay, here's the thing. So Cosmo is a cosmonaut dog that yes. got sent to space, and he gains telepathy through, I forget what happened, I guess cosmic, cosmic race. exposure. Okay, great. Yes. Yeah, so he the issue is he should be telepathic at all times. But that's kind of hard to do in film. Is it? Yeah. It, I mean, it, it's, it's easy on comic strip, but it's a little hard in other places. And yeah. they, they made him telekinetic instead of telepathic, which I don't think he, he's just telepathic in the comic. In fact, so uh, Mantis should be telepathic also, but she's not. She's empathic, which is totally uh, different. Yeah, I'm looking on Wikipedia right now. Cosmos, Cosmo has various psychic abilities. Very. So they, he could very well have. Uh, yeah, he has high-level telepathy and telekinesis. Oh, okay. And is capable of creating defensive shields strong enough to deflect energy blasts as well as project mind blasts a tremendous force. So maybe they'll show the um, tele- telepathy uh, in Guardians 3. Who knows? But yeah, so um, yeah, so they um go to Chinese theater. They get a map. It's fucked up what Mantis did to that lady. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the map's $40. Awesome. I don't have any money. Take the map. Give me your map. And all your money. Oh, shit. So um, it was actually nice to see that they went to a few houses when they, they split up. So I guess they took two maps. So somebody went to John Cena's house. I don't know if you saw that on the map. Uh, I know. That's what my attention. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, Kevin Bacon is at home waiting for uh, his wife, Kira Cedric, um, and I guess the kids to come home. And then um, best part of the movie, uh, the special. Them being shit faced and like taking like the uh, the inflatables, <laughs> like uh, Mant- Mantis had a candy cane, Drax had an elf, and bro, oh, what was your favorite part? My favorite part was when 
Mantis was basically telling Drax to throw over. She's like, what are you doing? <laughs> uh, I wasn't I ready. Yeah, I died. Yeah, I almost choked on my soda when that happened. But um, so yeah, uh, they literally um trespass on Kevin Bacon's property, break in through his house. Do you think Kevin Bacon did his own stunt jumping off the second story balcony onto the tree just get down? Uh, I don't see why he couldn't. He's gotta put a, a little platform thing down there and make it look like he hit the ground. No big deal. Yeah. Yeah. So, so um the creepiest thing to me was Drax and uh, Mantis just like jumping over all the fences. <laughs> I'm like, that was kind of creepy. It gave horror movie vibes, honestly. Um, Drax damn near killed two cops. And um, Mantis obviously used her powers on Kevin Bacon to coerce him into coming with them to nowhere. Bruh, I cannot believe they put this man in a box and he freaked out. And I mean, I mean, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, honestly, I think it was really good. And, you know, I mean, now that we know that Mantis is uh, Peter's half sister, you know, um, I didn't feel any way about it. I mean, bro, you already changed so much about Peter Quill by making the ego his father. At this point, you got to just take everything with a grain of salt. So, I mean, we are obviously, um, oh, and, um, Peter obviously told, uh, I mean, not Gamora. I always want to say Gamora because those two are always hand in hand. Mantis and Drax, the rest of the story, because um, in the story, Yondu, you know, said, I'm seeking no sentiment on this ship, basically. And we found out that later on that same night, Yondu is the one who gave Peter his elemental guns. Yes. Which they're, yes. they're not elemental guns, are they? I mean, they look like it, but I mean, they just fire stuff. I mean, we ain't seen no fire, no ice, no wind, no nothing to come out of those guns yet. But yeah, he gave him his guns. And um, so yeah, uh, Kevin Bacon performed with the band, and um, they got a new ship now, the Bowie. Didn't they have a ship? Um, they had um, the Milano. They had the Milano. They had didn't they have one after that? No, the Milano, they, they had versions of the Milano. Since okay, they had rebuilt it a couple times. Yeah. All right, so um, so yeah, um, Craglin was the was surprisingly the one who convinced Kevin Bacon to stay, and you know, rock out for Christmas by telling him that you know, you inspired <laughs> this dude as a kid, and he used Footloose to save the universe, <laughs> which is still just funny to me. I wish there was a uh, a mid or post credit scene. Like some just like a quick little bit of Zoe Zaldana or something, but it is what it is. Um, ten out of ten for me. I might watch it again after I edit this episode. So, oh, and surprisingly, this is the end of Phase Four. So yeah, there's that. Yeah. So what do you think? That was Wakanda Forever, but yeah, this is a little I mean, bow, little not at the end. I liked yeah. every minute of it. Uh, again, more Mantis. Uh, it's a long time coming. Yeah. And um, honestly, these special presentations are a good way for people to um, get over that phase four fatigue. Because, you know, people are like, oh, my God, this phase is trash. Nothing has been bad. Nothing has been good since Endgame. I guess people forgot that um, Far From Home and No Way Home came out after Endgame. Yeah. Also, all the TV shows are very degrees of good. To, to yeah, the, but uh, yeah, you know how people feel about She-Hulk and... And it's been what a year and a half since WandaVision and Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Boy, so people, people are just suck. like, yeah, again, I'm going to double down. Say, my, you, you, you cannot I'm say people down. suck because people listen to the podcast. I'm going to double down. You got to say some people suck. But we, we fandom. We fandom. That's what it is. If you're fatigued, that's because you can't hang with it. You're mid. All right. That's all it is. I like this format of them releasing. Like now, the, unfortunately, they're listening to um, input, which is always a good thing, I suppose. Well, no, this for... th- this was actually a thing that James Gunn actually he wanted to do like a short, and I guess kept. No, Michael yeah, that. I'm talking about so. the things overall. They're gonna um, they're gonna shift to a more quality over quantity approach. Which again, I get it, but I mean, it's like getting about the same amount of content. I just think it's just gonna be like two years because every phase is usually about two years. 
Like phase I, one, I, I was, just want them to hurt. I just want them to get more content, more characters. So I like the scatter shot approach to see what sticks. That's just me. But I'm also used to comic book publication, so use a lot of content. People that aren't used to that much stuff. You know? Yeah. But they'll watch. They'll they'll binge watch freaking Dahmer in one sitting. Okay. I mean, didn't you binge watch Wednesday? That mm, ain't the point. I don't. I don't complain <laughs> about that though. They'll watch. They'll binge watch um, Dahmer and then complain that the MCU is giving them too much content when they'll sit there and watch. No man, f that. Uh, I guess. All right. So uh, let's get into Wednesday. To Wednesday, created by two of my favorite creators who um, created. Got quite honestly. The show that inspired the Arrowverse, Smallville. Wow. Alfred Go wow. and Miles Miller. Um, they also created Into the Badlands. They also wrote uh, Spider Man 2. They also wrote Shanghai Noon, Shanghai Nights. Um, there was something else that was on the top of my, on the tip of my tongue, and now I can't remember what it was. So I'm going to look. I feel like it was something else for, um, for uh, Netflix. Looking it up right now. Uh, Lethal Weapon 4, Bullet to the Head. I am number four. That's what it was. Oh, yeah. Uh, Bullet to the Head. Uh, was it, is that the... Uh... The Sylvester Stallone movie with uh, Jason Momoa. Yeah. Oof. Oh, dude. They also wrote on the... Uh, well, Al Go wrote on the uh, Time Cop series. Oh, I wow. forgot that was even a thing. Yeah. They, uh, they also did the uh, Charlie's Angels reboot show. But you know, Yikes. yeah. In in the Shannara Chronicles, I do remember. I do recall that. Okay, so Wednesday overall loved yeah. every minute of it. I for one was guessing up until the to the reveal. I didn't guess the uh, the uh, the the antagonist. And I, I think if you, if you feeling Christina Ricci was going to be you, yeah. But it's like, it. what were you basing that on? Other than the fact that oh, Christina Ricci's here, she must be important. Like basically, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, that's not that's, that's not only... that's not predictability though. That's just you guessing. I just, just throw stuff I, predicted. I just said I guessed. Yeah, but some people, uh, some of my friends were saying, "Oh yeah, I guessed it halfway through." They, you weren't. There's no way you had to have just guessed it with nothing, with no, uh, with no basis in um in, in evidence. You know, yeah. it's like the show didn't. The show was leaving you on so many red herrings. It's ridiculous. And then when they threw you for the uh, spoiler, when they threw you uh for the loop with the the two thi- the the hide and the one who controls the hide aspects of the story. It's like that through the four loop because you have to think about two protagonists. Who, yeah. Who's the Who's high? the other person? And we, That's who was Xavier. Funny thing is, I just rewatched Teen Wolf season two, and this literally reminds me of season two of Teen Wolf with um, the Canima because the Canima needed a master. Yes, I do recall that that season. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, I'm trying to hurry up and finish um, seasons three through six now because we got a release date for the movie in January. But yeah, so Wednesday stores, uh, not stores, stars Jenna Ortega as Wednesday Adams. Um, I don't ever recall Wednesday having psychic powers. I mean, that might be something from the old. Uh, they definitely uh, added that. Show. Yeah, they definitely added that. Well, it might not have been in the movie because you got to remember, dude. Our only um, notation point of reference uh, for the Adams family are, are the two movies in the cartoon that came out after the movies. Uh, so, yeah, and the original comic strip. If you want to go back yeah, further, yeah, I mean, and the I don't original think series. Either one of but... us read read or watched that in black and white. I recall right. watch I, that might have been the monsters. Not let me not even say that. I was going to say I recall watching some of that in black and white as a child in, on Nick at Night. But that might have been the monsters. I, yeah. It might have been both, but I pro- I really remember watching the monsters. But um, so yeah, Jenna Ortega as Wednesday Adams. Uh, your favorite. Person, the tall woman, the big woman, Gwendolyn Christie as uh, Larissa Wims, who was the principal of Nevermore Academy. Um, Ricky yes, Lindholm. Great job. Great job. Yeah. So yeah. his his um, okay. So we're going through the um, cast at the moment, but here yes. here's the issue with this series. It has a lot of vibrant female characters, and I don't know if because they were so vibrant that they the male characters couldn't stand, couldn't hold account to them, or they just dropped the ball on the male characters. But most of the male characters in this series were a little lacking. Not that they were bad, it's just that they paled in comparison to a lot of the female characters. I mean, you had Jenna Ortega's uh, Wednesday. You had Gwendo Christie's um, uh, Headmaster Wings. Wings. Yeah. Yes. And then you had Enid. Everyone loves Enid. Um, you had the, the uh, Bianca. I forget the actress who plays her. Joy um, Sunday. Yeah, there we go. And you then you had uh, Christina Ricci. The point is, all these um, 
actresses, uh, just they were just knocking it out of the park. And then you had the love interest, who Xavier is a wet fish. I- I'm sorry, that boy is bland. And then you had Tyler, who started off pretty good, but once you figured it, spoiler, he's a hot. Once you figured it out, uh, it's like, well, he's clearly not the, the love interest. And his the the chemistry between the two of them was okay. It didn't hold account to her friend Enid. Which can we talk about the queer baiting in this series? Why? Because Enid was so perky, and Wednesday was no. I would queer- say. No, okay, the promo, you, have you watched the advertisement for this, this series on Twitter and social media? No, because I okay. already watched the show. So, 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 if so you the only the promotion, thing as far as advertising I've watched for this show was the first teaser trailer where, you know, they obviously show Wednesday and she does a double snap and the, the, the two trailers okay. that came out. If you saw the, the social media, if you saw the social media campaign for this series, they were pushing it heavily. Their relationship, Enid and, and Wednesday's relationship was very... Benly veiled, veilly, uh, uh implied that they were, they were more than friends. Now, no one suspected they would go that route, all right, and they didn't. But the idea that they baited it is a little insulting to any queer audience members, obviously. Um, honestly, I am looking on their I almost said Facebook, um, Twitter page right now. I'm not really seeing any ads per se. I'm seeing a good deal, honestly. But then again, I also read a lot of sapphic media and a lot of my social media platforms think I am a uh, lesbian. So maybe that's it. But that's the thing. It's, it's algorithm based. So if you are queer and you and your algorithm suggests it, it will get, bait you into watching. It's like the whole controversy with Netflix overall. It'll give you shows It'll change the posters of the shows to make it seem like uh, uh, POCs are the leads in those shows when they're not, just to get people of color to watch those shows. Like what? I can't give. I mean, I mean, I can probably look up an article about it, but I can't give you an exact examples because I don't tend to look at the uh, at the poster of a show. I look at this response before I go in and watch it and its premise. Hmm. But a lot of times they will they will uh, put a character that isn't the lead on the show, and it'll be there'll be a side character or a character only for an episode, and then they'll get you to watch the whole show. It's just, it's you know it's algorithm uh, tomfoolery essentially. Okay, but um, yeah, I mean I I didn't see any ads uh, like quote unquote queer baby, but um. So yeah, uh, Ricky Lindholm from Garfunkel and Oates, and also appeared on The Big Bang Theory. Who a lot oh, of people yeah, recognize her from. Her. Yeah, uh, she was Wendy's therapist, Valerie Cabot, uh, Jamie McShane. Um, I haven't watched. I haven't listened to our Garfunkel and Oates in quite a while. I don't think they've released an album in a while. They haven't. Yeah, um, Jamie McShane plays Donovan Gaplin, who is the sheriff of Jericho and is suspicious of all of Never, uh, Nevermore Academy. And Wednesday, um, Hunter Doohan plays his son, Tyler, who Samir spoiled was to hide in Wednesday's love interest. Um, Percy Hines White is Xavier, who is a student at Nevermore, who has the ability to make his art come to life. Uh, Emma Myers is en- Enid Sinclair, who plays Wednesday's roommate, who is a werewolf. Um, Joy Sunday, who... Shout out to Loco said should not be in this show just based wow. off of her based off of her name. Uh, plays Bianca Barkley, who is um, a siren in Xavier's ex girlfriend. Uh, Georgie Farmer is Ajax, who is a Gorgon at Nevermore. Uh, Naomi J. Ogawa played Yoko Tan- Tanaka, who is a vampire who who I really don't recall seeing much of. No, she's um, a, she was a background kid. Hopefully, she'll get more in season two. Yeah, Christina Ritchie played Marilyn Thornhill, who is the botany teacher, um, and Wednesday's dorm mom. And Musa Mustafa played Eugene, who is a student who has the ability to control bees. All right, yeah. so favorite character for you, Samira, outside of Enid and Wednesday? <laughs> uh, I already knew you were going to say Enid. Everyone always says Enid. Uh, oh, and shout out to Emma Myers, who plays Enid. Florida resident. Well, oh, Florida, what? Yeah, 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 born in Orlando. What? Okay, so I guess um, I would have to say either Eugene or Bianca. Bianca, probably. But Eugene is a close second. Um, I liked Ajax. 
He it's still messed. Up. It's still messed up what happened to him. It's like, come on, bro. You couldn't. You couldn't secure that towel. Even uh, you couldn't secure that towel better than that. He ended up stoning himself. I was surprised they don't have any um facilities for like they should have like a a, a, a mirrorless. Over, no, like a screen that just just, wipe, just just pull the screen over all the windows. Like they should be installed so that the Gorgon students don't stone themselves. Yeah. But yeah, um. I, I liked him, and I also liked I liked Eugene because Eugene came back and you know fucked things oh, up. Yeah, he oh, came for the um, yeah, obviously, um, Catherine Zeta Jones as Morticia Adams, Luis Guzman as Gomez Adams, oh, yeah, Brad Armstrong as Uncle uh, Uncle Fester. Out of all the people good. to play Uncle Fester, I was not expecting Fred Armisen to come he out. Did a good job. Did. Yeah, I know that's what I'm saying, but um. Um, Lurch was played by George uh, Bocara, and um, Pugsley was played by Isaac Ordinez. Um, so this was a question that was asked to me: Was Pugsley always a bitch? Mm, I think they gave him more depth, but no, he is definitely more of a. I'm not going to say bitch, but he's definitely a lot more. He's meek, dude. Meek. There we go. Meek. That is the word we want to look for. Yeah, but, but has he always been that way? Because I'm no. trying to recall. I mean, I mean, not in the I'm, movies, not in the two movies, and not in the cartoon show. Okay, so I, in the movies, he was always with Wednesday. He was never by himself to be right. bullied, and he also played second fiddle to Wednesday in terms of a character. He didn't really have much of a personality. Yeah, and Wednesday had more of a personality, but not much. I don't. But the cartoon show, the recent cartoon movie. I mean, I don't remember him being. They kind of singled out Wednesday again. She is fastly becoming the face of this franchise. Bro, and Wednesday has always been the face of the Adam Standard Adam Standard franchise worse, since, uh, yeah. since the nineties. Since Raul Julia, Angelic Houston, Christina Ricci, and Christopher Lloyd. I don't remember who played Pugsley. I don't know who did the stuff for Thing. I don't know who played Lurch. I just know Raul Julia was Gomez. Oh, and why well, okay, so I think we brought this up when we first talked about this show. People, Gomez is fat. You have to go back and look at the original Adams Family animation news. And the comic strip, yeah. Yes. I mean, yeah, we got it. We got a tall, slender Adams and at, at, uh, Gomez in the movies with Raul Julia. But guess what? In the animated movies, he's fat. People were complaining about that then. Do your damn research. Yeah. But, uh, anyways, uh, uh, what you. Okay, so. Uh, <laughs> Now I'm not gonna go through episode to episode. I'm gonna pretty pull much pull, yeah. uh, pretty much pull out highlights yeah. of the series. Um, specifically, okay, so we talked about the, the the prom. That was a big highlight of the series. That dance mm. was uh, something. Yeah, <laughs> but everyone loves it. Yes, that she did a great job on that. Um, also, uh, I mean, oof. bro, we got to talk about the first episode for starters. Well, the first where, episode, I know, but I'm talking about where where she put the piranhas in the pool. Oh, that was the great! Kid lost actually. the testicle. Yeah, that was great. I'm like, I'm not he deserved it. it. He did. That, I mean, don't you think that was a bit excessive? Bullies deserve it, but do they deserve to lose a testicle? I don't know. Did he, did the pugs deserve to be put in a uh, locker and traumatized? No. All right, there you go. Bro, don't, want none, don't get none. Look, don't start nothing, won't get none. That's what I'm so saying. It'll, don't start nothing, won't be nothing. Whatever. I don't care. <laughs> All right? He ain't got no testicle. Now he had to think about that for the rest of his life. I mean, it could have been worse. could have been... What if he the gets whole testicular? Thing? No, testicular cancer. No nuts. <laughs> but, um... So... Yeah, I mean, um... I really can't think of anything that like overstood me for episode two. Um, besides, you know, Thing actually finally showing up. Yeah, uh, I oh, like Thing. Thing was great. Thing makes me want to learn ASL, but I just don't have the patience. That's not part. ASL though. I could have sworn some of it was. Was it? It was one I, hand. How are you going to do ASL with one hand? I don't know, but I think some of it was. Uh, I would, I'm definitely going to have to look that up. Um, one of my favorite things was um, not just the dance, but um, the kids basically going full carry. 
Yes. And everyone's freaking out, and she's just like, they couldn't even use real blood. That was actually pretty good. I like that. Too. Yeah, and um, and when she broke into the coroner's office, and she went in the um, <laughs> what whatever yeah, fucking thing. She needed five more minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I like the backstory on uh, Wednesday. I mean, not Wednesday on uh, Gomez and Morticia in school. Oh yeah, that was great actually. And the that, yeah, that was actually a pretty good episode. Um, I'm glad we got like a slight break from what happened, and I like that every episode had "woe" in the title somehow. Well, so, like yeah, the first Wednesday is a child of woe. Yeah, that's literally the name of the first episode. Wednesday's child is full of woe. Second episode, "Woe is the loneliest number." Episode three, "Friend of Woe." Episode four, "Woe what a night." Number five, reap what you woe. Six, quid pro woe. Seven, if you don't woe me by now. And eight, a murder of woes. Um, huh. I like the episode where they went on the, um, when they went into the town and they were working at um, whatever the pilgrim place was, that name I can't remember. And she actually saw her great, great, great grandmother, Goody Adams. I like how they did the parallels. So, like, Wednesday's in all black and Goody's in all white with white hair. And, like, yes. actually has skin tone. Um, I mean, the only thing... I really don't have anything bad to say about this show. Not really nothing, actually. Um, again... I just wish uh, we got a little bit more of Uncle Okay, Fester. actually, no. Actually, so, I do like a lot of the side arcs with the characters. So, like, Bianca and her mom, that's going to be hopefully really big in season two, if they yeah. come back, which they're going to come back. Um, they, they coming I, back. Netflix it, just, just, it, just, it just depends on how large the cult is going to take um, precedent in the plot of season two, you know? Yeah, because we did get a little subplot with it with, um, who was that, Xavier? No, Not his Xavier. friend, um, oh. the, the kid who, the mayor's son who died, who's, who died. So actually, believe it or not, I think that's going to happen. So basically, he's going to end up getting taken advantage of by the cult because of obviously grief. And uh, that's going to lead them to want to um, probably go in and take it down. You know, things like that. Yeah. I just uh, hope we don't get Tyler. Also, yeah, high. also Enid's um, parents and, and their her arc and how crappy they were. <laughs> You know? Well, I mean, it was really her mom. Her dad was just her dad didn't stick up for her. It took him forever know, to say but something. Her dad was so. I think he's culpable. You know who? You know who Enid reminds me of? And I'm sorry, I'm taking it back to the Big Bang Theory. Um, Enid reminds me of Amy. Um, the way her mother was kind of like bossing her, like during her wedding, and her father, who was played by uh, Teller from Penn and Teller, obviously didn't speak. And yeah, you know, it was kind of very parallel to this. I suppose that's one way of putting it. But yeah, it's shitty parenting. Yeah. Um, oh, but yeah, her arc overall was really good. I mean, obviously, yeah. it culminated in her finally transforming, taking on the uh, the high and winning. So good. Yeah. Um, I didn't like the design of the werewolf. What? She was adorable. What did you like Bro. about it? Just like the gangliness of it. Yeah, wolves are wolves aren't hulky monsters. They're, they're graceful, slender beasts. Okay, they're all muscle and and, and 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 agile, like that. I like that they went that route as opposed to the hulking monsters that we normally get. Why they yeah. why they have to look so slow? What werewolf did you ever see that looked slow besides like Twilight? Uh, no, they were pretty actually agile and fast in Twilight. That's another. I actually like the the example, and no, they weren't werewolves; they were just wolves. Um, all right, let's take a, the the more recent um, Werewolf by Night. That was a strange. Uh, uh, that looked, you know, pretty ma uh, massive. He was more man than wolf. He was definitely a wolf man thing. There, I didn't see much wolf in there other than the hair and the fangs. It's like it was very well, evident what they were going for in this one because the, she looked very animalistic. Yeah. And then there's that awful uh, 2909 The Wolfman movie with uh, Benicio Del Toro and Hugo Weaving. Bro, neither and one of us watched that movie, so how are we going to talk about it? Watch the movie? I thought you said you didn't watch it. No, I definitely watched that movie I back in the day. a few episodes ago. It was boring. It was boring. I definitely watched it when it came out in theaters. It was boring. You're the only um, person I know who watched that movie. The yeah, and then you, then you had the Lycans on uh, Underworld. They were pretty... They, they did show them moving pretty quickly in the CGI, but they looked pretty massive. So, mm. uh, again, I liked that this particular um, iteration of Werewolf, you know, belied a level of agility and grace 
you know, because wolves are beautiful, um, you know, creatures and they, they're very agile. At least they can be. They're also massive. They people forget how big wolves are compared to regular dogs. At least, at least, the, at least the species of timber wolves. There's a large number of wolves, and they do have varying sizes. So the largest level, largest uh, species of wolf, which is t- one of the wild largest things, is timber wolf. Those things are huge. Thank you, Encyclopedia Brown. All right, me. I'm saying. All right. Uh, what was your favorite episode? Because, like I said, mine was the uh, episode five. It is hard to pick one. Um, the finale was one of was a standout for me. Uh, the what was the episode with the um, I think episode three was that was the one with the the, the canoe race, right? Um, it looks like it. I mean, it doesn't say. Yeah, I think that was, that was the one. Yeah, that was a good episode. Um, so yeah, uh, what do you rate this, Samir? Uh, I, personally, I rated a 9.7. Why the 0.7? Mm-hmm. I just think tens, saying tens would be just perfunctory and mid. So 9.7. Well, I'm giving it a nine and a half just because I didn't like the design of Enos Werewolf. Wow. You gave a 9.7 for no reason. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, fine. Uh, maybe make more, make the male characters more interesting. Okay, there you go. See, was that hey, so F hard? Sh- F the sheriff, by the way. F the sheriff. He sucks. I mean, bro, he had a grudge against the Adams family. He also knew his son was dangerous and didn't say nothing. Did he? Yeah, he did. He knew the wife had problems. He knew she was a, a, a an outcast. Not, uh, yeah, but his son never showed any type of like, you know. And when he found out, he still tried to cover it up. I mean, isn't that the job of she a gave, parent? She gave him no. That's not the job of a parent. The job of parents do what's right by your kid, and getting him help is what we should do. She gave him the um the evidence. Like if she if he just cross referenced it to his son's DNA, it would have found out. I'm pretty sure he's been booked before because he he got he got arrested. So he would be in the system. They cross referenced the DNA. He would have came up as a positive match. I don't that, recall them ever saying his son been arrested. Because he assaulted Xavier, he should have been arrested. Probably wasn't, though. Uh, then that's also the reason why he sucks balls. Just yeah. saying, he sucks. Yeah. But, uh, guys, if you have not checked out Wednesday on Netflix, be sure to watch it. I mean, it's already getting re- uh, renewed. So Netflix should have just said, all right, man, we, we, we know what y'all want to know, and it's happening. So Wednesday's coming back. Um, I hope to see more of the family. Oh, another good scene. Uh, Pugsley and Wednesday uh, fishing with dynamite. <laughs> yeah, that was a good one. Yeah. Um, I hope to see more of Lurch. I mean, I get it. Lurch doesn't talk. I don't ever recall Lurch ever talking. But still, I like I'm Lurch. Eventually, he's interested, but yeah, he doesn't say anything. Yeah. But uh, guys, uh, this is Bernard, a.k.a. the Scarlet Spider. And this is Samir, the King in Black. And that was another episode of the Angry Blurds podcast. All right, well, join us next time. Same blur channel, same blur network. I don't know if we're coming. When are we, when are we taking a break for the holidays? Um, we'll do this episode. Um, then I'll probably try to splice together like a best of episode or something. Yeah, um, we're gonna be taking a break definitely for like Christmas. But we, we let's try to we do should. like one thirty-minute episode like for the end of the year, where it's just like you know we just talk about like our favorite things of like Geekdom or something like that. Sure. Just so people we'll, can have something we'll, to listen to for the holiday. We'll think about it, yeah. Yeah. But next week, we're definitely coming back because we both got to review Violet Night. Yeah. Starring, uh, who else is in this movie besides David Harbour? Let me look. John Leguizamo. Oh, okay. That's it? That's all you got? Um, yeah. I mean, that's all I think remember. So, yeah. So, this is actually done, uh, produced by David Leach, who is also, um, the director of, uh, John Wick. Uh, so it stars David Harbour, John Leguizamo, uh, Alex Hassel, who I don't know. Uh, oh, Cam Gagandit's in this. Oh. You know who Cam Gagandit is, right? Yeah. Who is he? He was in that one show. Um, crap, I know I've seen a, I know I, I know I've seen that guy's um, name in the credit before. He, he's that, he was uh, James in Twilight. He was also in yeah. the movie Never Back Down. He was that, in the that's what I'm saying. Yeah, 
he was in um crap. Why can't I remember? His... Hang on, I know I saw him in a show recently. Uh, Ice. That was the last show he was on, and that was from 2016 to 2018 on that. Uh, I don't think I saw Network. that. You know what? I think I might remember. Are him you rewatching from... the OC? I think I might remember clips from the OC. Mm. But yeah, he was also in uh, Turbo, Ugh. Easy A, The Unborn, The Roommate. What did he play? Easy a? Oh, he was Micah. the one that. Yeah, he got crabs. Yes, he did. But yeah, I mainly know him from uh, Never Back Down, where he was the asshole to Sean Ferris. And what the hell is Sean Ferris doing? Playing uh, Asian characters. When the hell did Sean Ferris play an Asian character? Tekken. He was in Tekken? Yes. No, he was in King of Fighters. One of the two. Yeah, yeah it was he, awful. Yeah, he played Kyo. Oh, God. Oh, God. Hey, man. I, I know you got to pay your bills, Sean. I ain't mad at you. All right, I'm mad. I'm mad at the, I'm mad at the cast. Hey, man. You know in the video game movies, sometimes they just... They don't work. They work mostly now. We're in the age yeah, of Yeah, now, game but movies. come on, man. We had... I mean, like, fighters? Fighter movies? Because Mortal Kombat is still trash. King of Fighters, Tekken, Dead or Alive. Oof. What, what else we need? Uh, Street Fighter, as much as I love Kirsten Cook, Legend of Chun Li. No. That shouldn't have happened. Um, I get it. Uh, her mom's Chinese, but still... Not, yeah, that was not a cast. That should not have been a cast that didn't play that. No. Yeah. But, um, yeah, guys, we'll see you next week. Like I said, when we review Violent Light, uh, by Violent Night, and, um, a few other things that might come out. But, yeah. yeah. So, live long sure, and prosper on planet Earth. You ain't gonna let me get my, uh, be sure to rate, review, subscribe, tell a friend to tell a friend off. I mean, you said every week. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, but I said. just said it. So, yeah, we'll see you next week. Peace. Oh, wrong button. Wait, wow. stop.